Let's begin with our top story. One of Europe's most prominent liberal MEPs, Guy Verhofstadt, well, he unveiled his new message just outside Parliament today. And uh, Viktor Orban is destroying Europe. That is the latest, uh, that is the latest offensive in a PR battle between Hungary's prime minister, his Fidesz party, and EU liberal leaders. Now, the Hungarian government has itself been releasing videos on social media for months now. And these are certainly more, there are more subtle ways of going about this, of course. We're looking at these videos. Look at that. All right. Well, looking at that, I mean, that's certainly one way of communicating, isn't it? Yes, it certainly is. I mean, I think one of the things to remember when it comes to Guy Verhofstadt is that he is actually one of the few politicians who manages to cut through the Brussels bubble and has brand recognition in the wider context of Europe. So in that sense, it's certainly an innovative and it's quite compelling in that it builds on his brand. That said, Guy Verhofstadt is what we would call a Marmite politician <laughs> in the UK. Marmite famously is a breakfast spread that people... Eat and they either love it or they hate it. And I it's the hate same. It, for example. No, it's you delicious. hate it. You, hate you, it. you no, think no, it's delicious. You you think exactly. It's but for no. Hofstadt, much like Nigel Farage, Seb's best friend, is a Marmite politician, which means that it's going to work very well with the people who like him and think mm. he's great. With the people who don't, it's just more of the same. Mm. Yeah, what do you think, Seb? You kind of yeah. like it? No, I, I, I completely agree. I think, um, you know, the Hofstadt is one of the few. Uh, MEPs, I say this is an MEP who <laughs> manages to cut through uh, a, a range of I wasn't audiences. talking about that. <laughs> I know you were, and I don't take it personally. Uh, but, you know, the, the truth is that very, very few people do make it on a national scene, and, 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 and Guy is one of those people. So, yeah, I, I agree. Your, your Marmite analysis is, is spot on. I mean, this is really a not a subtle way of going about things. Darren, you saw this for real. Was it, was it convincing? Well, no, I mean, he clearly feels quite passionate about it. He has been one of the strongest voices uh, against Viktor Orban in, uh, in Parliament. That is undoubtedly true. Also, he is the leader of the ALD group. You know, we're coming up to an election campaign. The EPP is meeting in Helsinki tomorrow. This was as much an attack on them Absolutely. as it was on Viktor Orban. But as you say, I caught up with him uh, earlier on uh, when he was launching that campaign outside Parliament. And uh, he started really by launching into uh, Viktor Orban. Let's have a listen. Far too long what we have seen is Mr. Orban very aggressively attacking uh, liberal democracies. He called it illiberalism. He wants to create an illiberal state. And, with, and, and Europeans uh, do nothing at all. Don't react. Don't even say, we're going to stop you. Well, it's time that uh, uh, we, we do that. And that's the reason for this uh, truck uh, in English and at the other side. But you're going to see it in a few moments uh, okay. in, uh, in Hungarian. Who, who is this campaign uh, aimed at? Is it aimed at uh, MEPs? Is it aimed at the Hungarian people? Because aren't you just kind of stoking up the no, very... To the, to the Hungarian people, that's the reason why, if uh, you have a minute, you're going to see at the other side uh, the clear uh, slogan also in, in Hungarian. And at the other side, it's also a message uh, to the people here in Brussels, because otherwise it's not necessary to... Uh, uh, have the car in Brussels, so that they take their responsibility, because they can take their responsibility. We have taken our responsibility with the European Parliament, we have voted for an Article 7. And since then, I don't talk about the Commission, I mainly talk about the European Council, well, people nothing voted, is happening. People have voted for Viktor Orban as well. Though. Yeah, but th that doesn't mean that you have the majority, that you can do what you want. I respect uh, the outcome of the elections in Hungary. I don't uh, dispute them, the elections in Hungary. But that doesn't mean if you have a majority in a country that you can start uh, to forbid NGOs uh, to, uh, to be active, that you can start uh, to close down a university. Well, probably he was not elected on that basis, yeah. I, I don't remember but do that. You, we, don't you risk stirring up the very tensions that you claim no, you want to quell down? Until what, what is happening is that far too long now, the last 10 years, uh, pro-Europeans, have been silent about this. Uh, we are talking about uh, the, the, uh, the Stability and Growth Pact, and we are talking a lot about the single market, but we don't talk about what is the, the most, the biggest threat for the moment in Europe, that is undermining the values and the principles of the European Union. And, and nobody does it. Well, we will do it. Uh, and that's clearly, I think, Tessa, a message we're going to see over and over again uh, during the campaign. You know, as European politics fragments, um, and as uh, we see the rise of populism, mm. clearly, potentially along with Emmanuel Macron, you know, 
he wants to be the face of actually what Europe needs is more Europe, I mean, not that, less. that truck, that billboard was just right outside uh, uh, Parliament here. And there's this element of shock and awe. I mean, this is, you know, one of our panellists actually tonight has had his own interesting experience with this shock and awe and political messaging. Let's take a look at Seb's stunt at the European Parliament, Seb, that went viral. Look at mm. that. This, you were holding a sign mm. saying he's lying to you while Nigel Farage was mm. speaking. I mean, what was what was that about? Well, I, some were of you the, trying to shock and awe as well? Well, some of the frustration that uh, Guy Verhofstadt was just talking about, I felt acutely on that day. I mean, I have to say it was not planned and it wasn't something that I had thought, oh, well, this is going to be noticed or, or I, I had no idea who would spot it or whatever. I was sitting there and I was absolutely incandescent, frankly, with the stuff that uh, Farage, I knew he was going to say because, of course, as leader of the EFDD, I knew he'd get his speaking time. And I, I you know, I, I had to do something. Uh, and I think what we've just heard in terms of Guy, uh, Guy saying that pro-Europeans haven't defended the values of Europe over the last 10 years, I completely agree. I don't think we've been muscular enough about this. But I think we, without realising, is that is that a successful way of political messaging. You have a simple, provocative, strong message. I mean, you've worked on campaigns. Is that is that communications 101? Well, I think a lot of it, it's about, yes, it's about having simple, provocative messages. And I think as we broaden this out to a couple of the more recent campaigns, obviously there was the Trump election and, of course, before that Brexit, make America great again, vote, leave, take control. Those are both very simple and provocative, but they were also great stories. Now, you can get into the substance behind it and whether or not they're the claims that were made were true. But I think that the simple provocative messages work, but I also think it depends on who is delivering them. Exactly. And I think that the Hofstadt delivering messages in Hungary well, could be potentially very, very difficult and could play straight into Viktor Orban's hands as well in terms of foreign interference. Is, is that what's happening now? Because, OK, you, we just saw Nigel Farage, you have Viktor Orban, certainly personalities, and that's what Giver Hofstadt is trying to do. Is it now becoming, rather than policy, it's just personality versus personality? I wish it would come a bit more personality in Europe. I don't think it is. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me sound incredibly Ooh. superficial. Uh, no, I don't think we're there yet. Okay. Uh, to be frank, I think it's a very, very difficult climate and I think people are trying anything because nobody really knows what the rules are. Anymore. And to follow on Laura's point, is it playing into Viktor Orban's hands? I think that's a, real, that's a real possibility. As I say, though, I don't think this is necessarily just an attack on Viktor Orban. This is about applying political pressure, hence why he was outside the European Parliament. But, yeah, clearly, Viktor Orban is popular in Hungary. I don't think anyone can doubt that. And, you know, is someone who, who stands for everything that Viktor Orban doesn't stand for, uh, is that message going to resonate? Is it going to turn people? Uh, is it going to be effective in Hungary? Exactly. I suspect... No. I think it also depends on who, where he's taking his billboard truck to. If he's taking it to Budapest, he's probably he, he speaking is. to a pretty mm. converted it's audience. Small, yeah. mm. You know, Orban is not popular in Budapest. Mm. If, if the Hofstadt was really going to make this interesting, he would take his truck out into the middle of rural Hungary and have a conversation with some of the farming mm. communities there. Now, that would be much more interesting real conversation, but probably potentially a lot more risky. I think part of this might be, though, demonstrating that you have support. So if you go to a place like Budapest, you, know, you have, mm. if you like, the backing of other people in the European European Union for your campaign for civil society in Hungary. I think that that, that is an important message. You're well. absolutely right, but then does it feed back into the Orban uh, and, in fact, what you see across the board in Europe mm. with populists of the liberal elite? You know, mm. he goes to Budapest, mm. he mm. talks to his own audience, the comparatively well-off, sure. the politically yeah, the, I mean, engaged. That, the, 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 const, the constant problem is that for the people who argue that the solution to Europe's problems is more yeah. Europe, it's simply, it's not in vogue at the moment. It's mm. not having much traction mm. with voters. Mm. And, that, and, that, and that is ultimately Giva Hochstadt's big problem.